In this video, we're going to take a look at transforming absolute value functions. And we're going to start with the simple, the parent function of the absolute value, which is just f of x equals the absolute value of x. And we're going to apply some of these, I like to call them recipes for transformations, that we can apply to any functions. So we've got all these uh, recipes over here, and let's take a look at some examples of how exactly these will work. Okay, so first one it says let g of x be a transformation up three units okay well up three units is a vertical change so I grab my vertical shift one right here okay so I'm gonna write g of x is equal to and it's this one right here the vertical shift it's gonna be f of x plus k and k is that vertical shift. Remember that when we go up, that's a positive movement. When we go down, it's a negative. So in this case, since we're going up, it's going to be plus 3. So f of x plus 3. Okay, so then I just need to find f of x and put it in there. Hey, there it is. We've got f of x right here is equal to the absolute value of x. So we're going to replace this with this okay so we have g of x is equal to f of x well that's the absolute value of x plus three and in this case we can't do any simplification so there it is okay let's try another one here this next one we have a transformation left two units a left movement is a horizontal shift so here's our recipe for that it's going to be f of x minus h. Okay, so I've got g of x is going to be equal to f of x minus h. Hmm, what's my h? h is the horizontal shift, and if I'm going to the left, remember if we're graphing, think of that movement to the left. Well, it takes a negative number to take us to the left. So a movement to the left is a negative. So it's going to be minus, and h in this case is negative 2. So minus negative 2, which is going to make this x plus 2. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, in this case, I have g of x is equal to, and it says f of this. Okay, remember, when we have f of something, what it's saying is we replace x with whatever's inside of here in our function f. So if we look at our function f, this x will be replaced with x plus 2. So it becomes the absolute value, okay, because that's what I have there, and the x is going to be replaced with x plus 2. Okay, so x plus 2, absolute value, there it is. Okay. Then, next one says, a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, well, reflection over the x-axis, we see that right here, and it's the negative f of x. Okay, so g of x is equal to negative f of x. Okay, so ooh, that got a little messy there. Let's clean that up. Negative f of x, like so. <coughs> Excuse me. Then, what is my f of x? Well, hey, here it is. Still the absolute value of x. So g of x is equal to negative, and my f of x, right up here, remember this equal sign means I can replace this whenever I see that. So this becomes the absolute value of x. Negative absolute value of x. Okay, now that's all we can do with that. We can't take that negative inside the absolute values. Those absolute values are like walls there. We can't bring stuff inside of there. So that negative is going to sit on the outside. Okay, then a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, vertical stretch. Hey, right here. And it's a times f of x. Okay, so we have g of x is going to be equal to a times f of x and a is our factor 
So in this case, it's a factor of 2, so 2 times f of x. Okay, so we have g of x, which is equal to 2 times f of x. Well, what was f of x? There it is, still the absolute value of x, so it's just going to be 2 times the absolute value of x. Again, that 2 cannot jump inside there with that x. It's 2 times that f of x. Okay, then, last one we've got here is horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. Okay, here's the horizontal stretch. And in this one we have g of x is equal to f of 1 over b times x. And our b is the factor, the horizontal stretch factor, which in this case is 3. So we have 3 there. Okay, so it's f of 1 third x. Well, remember what we did when we had a situation like this. We took this piece and replaced it for x back in our function f. Okay, right there it is. So this becomes g of x is equal to the absolute value, remember I'm replacing x with what's inside here, so it becomes one-third x, like so. Okay, so notice the difference. A vertical stretch is going to be sitting on the outside, whereas a horizontal stretch, that pops into the inside of the absolute value. Now, we could also graph all of these functions and compare them to the parent function, that absolute value of f, and you would find that these things have happened. It's a movement up 3, left 2, and so on. If you want to check those, you certainly can do that. So, transforming absolute value functions. We have these nice little recipes over here which allow us to do that. We can just find, take our function and find the h or the k or the b or the a, depending on the situation. And remembering that a horizontal shift to the left is negative, and if we're going up and down, down is negative, okay? And be careful, remember this form is x minus h, so if we're going to the left, we're going to put in a negative, so say 3 to the left, well that would be a negative 3, so this becomes x plus 3. When we're dealing with absolute values, this one right here, when we're um, reflecting the parent function, it's a reflection over the y-axis. What would happen here? Just out of curiosity, think about that. The absolute value function, remember, it's just a nice little v-shape, and the parent is at 0, 0 with our vertex. So if we reflected it over the y-axis, that's this one, is there going to be any change? No, there's not because notice what would happen. We would put negative x inside the absolute value, and what's going to happen to that negative x? Well, it's going to come out as a positive still. That negative inside really doesn't have an effect because of the absolute value. So the function, even flipped over the y-axis, it makes no difference. It ends up looking the same. Hope this video is helpful in transforming absolute value functions. Keep working hard on your math. I know you can do it.